Hi folks, welcome to this video on structure and function of blood vessels, okay? There are three general types of blood vessels in our bodies, arteries and arterioles. Arterioles are basically smaller versions of arteries. Veins and venules, and again, they're smaller versions of veins and capillaries. So we're just going to look at uh, one at a time and just go through the structure and function of each of these blood vessels. Now what I've, got, what I've got here is to imagine cross-section areas of uh, an artery or an arterial. And there's two terms. Um, that If you've watched the uh, video on redistribution of blood, you'll know what these terms are. If you haven't, these two terms are vasodilation and vasoconstriction. This is something that arteries and arterioles can do. Vasodilation, what is it? Right, this opening here is called a lumen, okay? L-U-M-E-N, okay? And that is the opening through which the blood will flow. Now, what you can see here, during vasodilation, or when the blood vessel is vasodilated, the lumen is very, very wide, and that increases the blood flow, so you can get more blood to an area. During vasoconstriction, what do we notice is that the lumen has got very narrow. It's narrowed up. And that means that you are reducing blood flow to an area. Now, why you would do that, why you would want to increase and decrease blood flow to an area, is best to watch the video on the redistribution of blood, also known as vascular shunt. But basically, in a nutshell, if I am exercising a particular muscle group, so I'm doing squats or something like that, I will vasodilate uh, in the arteries and arterioles leading to the muscles in the legs to give them more blood and more oxygen. Whereas I will vasoconstrict to the muscles in the upper body that don't need as much blood at that moment in time. So that is what vasodilation and vasoconstriction is. Now, where does this fit in with arteries and arterioles? Arteries and arterioles are the only blood vessels that can really properly vasodilate and vasoconstrict, and there's a very good reason for that. Now, once again, excuse my poor drawing, but what I've attempted to draw there, with a varying degree of success, okay, is the reason why arteries can vasodilate and vasoconstrict. What have they got? They have got a muscle layer. So even though they are blood vessels, they actually have muscles inside the walls of the blood vessels. And that's what allows them to change the shape and size of the lumen and therefore change the amount of blood flowing to an area. I've said about the, you know, the doing legs in the, when you're doing squats and things like that. But think about what colour you go when it when it's hot, when the weather's hot. You go red. Why? Because you are going to vasodilate the blood vessels close to the surface of the skin, so the heat can the heat that's in the blood can get close to the surface of the skin, so you can lose it through sweating and things like that. How does this lumen change its size from that to that, and then back from that to that again? by contracting and relaxing these muscles inside the walls of the arteries and the arterioles. So if a question comes up on the structure and function of blood vessels, there's a little tick number one. They've got a muscle layer, they've got a muscular layer on it, okay? Well, let's go a little bit more common sense as well. What do they always do? They always carry blood away from the heart. That's their function, to carry blood arteries carry blood away from the heart, AA. So they carry blood away from the heart, okay? And if I'm being honest, I've mentioned these a little bit out of order. I should, I should have maybe saved that one till the end because there's another couple of things I can say about arteries linked to the first point, linked to this muscular layer and this ability to vasodilate and vasoconstrict. What else can I say about them? They have elastic walls. Elastic means they can stretch and they can recoil back to, to their original size again. Okay? Now that's very, very important if I am going to vasodilate and vasoconstrict and vice versa, that these walls, okay, not just the muscles, but the walls are elastic, they can stretch and they can go back to their original size and strength, uh, size and shape, sorry. And finally, again, linked to this muscular layer uh, uh, point that we've made, they also carry blood at high pressure okay at the highest blood pressures 
you will find blood travelling in arteries is at the highest blood pressure. So, structure and function of blood vessels, they're the four key things that I can say. They've got a muscular layer, so they can vasodilate and vasoconstrict. They always carry blood away from the heart. They have elastic walls allowing them to vasodilate and vasoconstrict, and they can also carry blood at high pressure. Okay, so to veins and venules, okay, which again are baby veins. What are your smaller versions of veins? What can we say about them? How are they different? Well, there's something that you should be able to look from the diagram that I've drawn here, okay? Something that should be fairly obvious straight away, okay? They have a much wider lumen, okay? So that's going to be worth a mark. What else do they always do? They carry blood towards the heart. Arteries carry away, veins carry blood towards the heart. So that's something else. Now, here's a key thing. How do they always carry blood back to the heart? And this is the diagram on the left-hand side here. You will see, if I just get a bit of a better pointer on here, these things here, okay? These are what we call pocket valves, okay? As you can see here, it says that to the heart. So the blood is flowing in this direction back to the heart. However, what's working downwards is gravity. What do these valves do? They're called pocket valves because they're shaped like pockets that you get on your jeans and on your trousers. They're going to prevent blood from flowing in the wrong direction. You don't get that in arteries. You don't get that in capillaries. So what else can we say about veins and venules? They have valves. Okay. And that is to prevent backflow of blood. Very, very important. And again, give myself a tick. That's definitely worth a mark there. Okay. And finally, jumping ahead of myself again, really, I should have stuck with the uh, wider lumen point that we made. Okay. Earlier on, this lumen being nice and wide. Because the lumen is nice and wide, they carry blood at low or lower blood pressure. Okay, they carry, in fact, they carry blood at the lowest blood pressure. If you haven't watched the video on blood pressure and velocity, I advise that you do it. But basically, the blood has been pumped out of the heart straight into the aorta, straight into the arteries. That blood has then travelled down the arteries to the capillaries, which are going to carry the blood through the muscles and through the organs. That's where it's going to drop off the oxygen and pick up the carbon dioxide, and then it's going to go into the veins, okay, and then work its way back to the heart. The thing that gives blood its pressure, essentially, is the heartbeat. Well, that heartbeat happened a very, very long time ago. By the time the blood is in the veins, that heartbeat was a long time ago. So... As it's travelled further, and as the blood's travelled further and further from the heart, by the time it gets into the veins, the blood pressure is very, very low. And having a big, wide lumen like this doesn't increase the pressure. Imagine getting a hosepipe and sticking your thumb over the end of it. The water starts to shoot out very, very quickly. That's what happens when you narrow the lumen. It will spurt out. That's a very, very wide lumen. The blood is not going to be flowing through the vein at very high pressure. Okay. And finally then, capillaries. Capillaries, if you're watching in America. Okay, capillaries. They are the thinnest, narrowest blood vessels. These are thinner than the hairs on your head. So this diagram doesn't really do it justice. This diagram is obviously miles bigger than a capillary will be. Okay, as I said, their job is to carry blood, okay, through muscles, and organs slash tissues. We sometimes collectively call them that. So their job is to carry blood through muscles and organs and tissues, hence why they've got to be very, very thin. You don't want big holes in your muscles. You want tiny holes where tiny blood vessels are going to get through. Okay? Now, what is the job of the blood in the capillaries and the capillaries themselves? Well, don't forget, this blood is full of oxygen. 
this is the blood that's come from the heart via the arteries and the arteries turn into arterioles and the arterioles are now capillaries. This is oxygen rich blood when it first enters the capillaries into the muscle. What is the job of the oxygen? It's to diffuse out of the capillary into the muscle tissue or into the organ. At the same time, CO2 that has been building up inside the muscles and inside the organs has got to diffuse into the capillary so that we can then car carry it back to the heart. So what do we need? How are capillaries built in order to help this happen? They've got to have very thin walls. Otherwise the gases can't diffuse across them. As oxygen, If that's a big thick wall like it is in an artery and even in a vein, the gas is not going to be able to diffuse across. Similar with the CO2, it's not going to be able to diffuse back into the bloodstream. So capillaries have got to have very thin walls. So that's going to get me a tick there. I know we said the lumen was narrow um, on a vein. It is unbelievably narrow in a capillary. So what we can put there is very narrow lumen. Now here's a little thing. So narrow that the blood cells, the red blood cells, will flow through the lumen in the capillary in single file. That's how narrow, only one red blood cell is allowed, can get through at a time. That's how narrow that lumen is. Okay. Why is that? Well, that's allow that allows maximum oxygen diffusion into the muscles. If I'm just allowing one red blood cell through at a time, it means that one red blood cell can release all of its oxygen and it can pick up lots of carbon dioxide. So that's very, very important as well. Finally, sorry for writing these all over the place. Okay, what else can we say about them? You often get in the muscles a high capillary Density. What we mean by that is there are thousands of them, tens of thousands of them flowing through your muscles. So there are way more capillaries than there are arteries and veins, but because they are so small, okay, it allows, um, it allows them to branch everywhere and reach everywhere inside uh, the muscle and inside the organ, okay? Hope you found that useful, folks. The structure and function. Basically, what is it? The structure is, how is it built or how are they built to allow them to do their job? That's the function, okay? An example there is, you know, valves, how are they, sorry, veins, how are they built? They have valves. How does that allow them to do their function? Well, the valves allow them to prevent a backflow of blood and always carry blood back towards the heart. So questions on this topic often relate structure to function. Good luck with it. Watch this video as many times as you need. Use it to help you complete the tasks in your workbook.